my project manager, Brian, tasked me with getting started on feasibility and concept design for an RFP of a new pick-and-place integration. I want to reuse as many components as I can, but I know I'm going to have to modify a few. I'll build a basic layout, do a quick motion check to validate its feasibility, and calculate a quick cost roll-up for our proposal. Losing this bid is not an option, so I'd really like to get the design to a point of a visual bill of material to clearly illustrate our vision. Before anything else, I need to get our customer's data into our secure PDM vault. To stay organized, I'll kick this project off with a standard directory structure. With a right click, I can launch what's called a project template. This will automatically create a consistent folder hierarchy and populate it with any appropriate starter files to keep all our projects easy to navigate. After copying and pasting the customer's file set, I can check it in so it's available to the entire team and leave it checked in to keep it in a read-only state. Now, I'm ready to start modeling. I'll need to select a conveyor fit for catching the soap bags off the exit chute. Searching in PDM quickly presents me with all the conveyors we've ever used. To narrow down these results, using logical operators like AND, OR, and NOT help me find the perfect match. I'll preview the model, measure it, and confirm. Ah, this is exactly what I need. Using magnetic mates, this conveyor automatically snaps to the ground plane, making it easy to position. The second conveyor needs to accommodate four soap bags, so this design definitely needs to be tweaked. In the meantime, I can use an assembly level sketch to rough out a placeholder for it and get an idea of exactly how big it really needs to be. To build this conveyor, I'm going to use the first conveyor as a starting point. PDM's copy tree feature grabs all the assembly's reference components, duplicates them while generating new part numbers for only the parts I'll be modifying, and then organizes them all into the new project's directory. Taking a look at the model, it appears it was imported from another CAD system. That means no features or dimensions for quick modifications. Fortunately, direct editing tools like the move face command allows me to stretch the length and the width of this conveyor to its required size. Placing the conveyor into the assembly reveals that I'll need to reduce the height of the aluminum extrusion frame. Finding the driving 3D sketch and nudging the height dimension will make it a perfect fit. Now that the two conveyors are in place, I'll need to design a frame to protect them while supporting the pick-and-place mechanism. In the past, we get started with a 3D sketch, but now it's even easier. With SOLIDWORKS Structure System, all I need to drive the design is an extrusion. I'll offset it from the ground for some foot levelers, and it's just a matter of choosing from a list of stock profiles and then applying them to the edges and intersection planes of the extruded block. Primary members can be differentiated from secondary members to guide the automated trimming order. In no time at all, my frame's complete, with every member cut to the perfect length. The last major component I need to account for is the pick-and-place mechanism. I'll need to make sure I've got the right size to fit our application. But because we haven't won the bid yet, I'm not too concerned about the exact location. I do, however, need my cost estimate of this assembly to be a little more exact. Some information is already baked into these components. We know the cost per unit length of the structural profiles, and of course, common setup costs and labor is known as well. Before SOLIDWORKS costing, we manage all this information with Excel spreadsheets. I'm starting to get excited about this project. PDM helped me organize my documents, reuse as many components as I could, and assign fresh part numbers to anything I changed. I designed the main structure of the frame faster than ever, and I quickly estimated the cost of the job. There's still plenty of work to do, but this is the perfect level of detail for the visual bomb Brian needs to reply to the RFP.